Greetings, fellow Shek. Rockvin here. Thank you for tuning in to Kenshi Shek's Conquest, Episode 20, Forbidden Knowledge. There we go. I set her up to now actually try to, you know, farm the hemp. I just had built it last uh, stream, so just wasn't set up right. Alright, checking in on L's. As soon as L's hits, I'm going to say 17 lockpick, uh, we can get going. So he's at 11 now. Even if we don't all have the correct weapons, 17 is sort of... Uh, 17, 18, something in that range is sort of the minimum that I think uh, will be good. Ooh, look at all those electrical components. So instead of turning them into small turbines, I'll turn them into money. Three grand worth of money, which can help fuel some more science. Case, what are you doing? I've been watching Case uh, running around like a madman. What are you doing, man? It's going back and forth, back and forth. Let's see here. Give me your books, your dried meat, and that's all I want. Uh, let's also buy the blueprints for sabers for Horse Trapper. It's very, very inexpensive and fully can get his own Horse Trapper at some point. I'm still just going to be grinding out katanas for now, but sometime in the, in the future when we have time. Arc Rune, thanks for the uh, uh, the tier one sub conversion. I'm not even don't see that all that often. <laughs> dropping off the books, dropping off some food items, and queuing up another research. Splints. Biofuel. Biofuel is not terrible, but I'm pretty sure we're going to end up living somewhere that has wind. So, just some stone refinery. We don't really need it, but I like to be completionist, personally. All right. I'll keep it on the fastest speed to try to get the picking uh, skill required. Let's get this show on the road. Shinjan, thank you for gifted subs. Cheers, man. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah, Kenshi was ridiculously ambitious for their uh, their dev team of one initially and the wife. I shouldn't. The both of them. The duo. The married duo. A writer and a coder. Very, very ambitious and impressive. Alright. We're just waiting on you, Els, at uh, 13. So there's different ways to pick things in the game. There is lock picking. There is using tools, which you have to buy and pay for. And then some ways you can also just bash things open, which is kind of not advised and requires a lot of strength. Um, I prefer lock picking, so we're going the lock picking route. It's more versatile. It can get you out of situations like being enslaved or being imprisoned, uh, whereas the others don't help you in that way. How's Trapper Keeper's smith skill? Weapon smithing is up to 43%. Or 43 out of 100, I should say. I guess that's kind of a percentage. Now, if you take a look at the bottom left of the description here, uh, I have to kind of mouse over it. Weapon quality cat number three. So this, currently she's limited by the fact that her bench sucks and it's sort of restricting the quality that I can craft. And if I had a higher quality bench, 
she could make something better. But the problem is I don't have the fabric to be able to do that. Really, at the second I raise my... Okay, yeah, I see how it is. I see how it is. Now, I'd also like to try to get uh, armor smithing going soon. In order to do that, if you take a look at the smithing tree, plate armor crafting requires engineering research. So, plate armor crafting is what we're really waiting on, uh, locked behind the engineering research uh, requirement, which is a, you know, as I said before, a fancier book that you don't get uh, without going purposely out to look for it. I'm sure we'll have some injuries from this, but nothing that should be a setback, because these guys are getting smoked. Let's do a quick look. Uh, Ruka's stomach uh, is a little low. Sharp points a little low as well, but nothing all that serious. Stuff we can heal up quickly when we need. So I'd be able to upgrade the stone mine, uh, but given that I have 73 stone in uh, my storage here, I probably need to upgrade the stone processing, not the stone mine, which the stone processing really is the bottleneck. And the reason I have all these building materials is buildings and walls cost building materials like this, so you're going to want to stock up the building materials for when you're trying to build like a fully wall-enclosed fortress type thing. It requires hundreds of building materials in some instances. So that's that's why I'm uh, amassing a lot of building materials for that purpose. All right, Rockfin's out of research that he needs to do, and Trapper Keeper has yet another cat blade. Uh, Kang, you're gonna keep one of these because this ninja blade is going to go to Fang, I believe. Let me double check on that. Yeah. As Fang's requested one. So Fang, there you go. That's yours. Kang, being one of the uh, strongest in the group, is going to keep a katana for himself, which makes sense. And checking on Els' research, or uh, progress. 16, so one more level, maybe two, and I'll be set to go. I'll try to do this on the fastest possible uh, speed so that we can get this show on the road. Because your first uh, trickle of ancient science books and uh, engineering research really opens up a lot of options all of a sudden in a very, very cool way. believe there's an uh let's do composite runners fine it's the only only thing i had available to me all right king's gonna go over to the rubble base get a little bit more food and then we're gonna get ready to go i haven't let anyone starve but some people are somewhat hungry Now, if there's anything that you wish was part of the game, you could, of course, there's a lot of public mods. So, you know, check the, the mods list because it's possible that it exists. And all you have to do is uh, install the mod. Like, there is a fishing mod that you can install, for instance. And a whole lot of, like, buildings and structures and, you know, you name it, it probably exists. All right, Mr. Ells. Still 16. Still working on it. What do I think about robbing stores at night? It's something that the Sheck would never do. Roleplay-wise and for game balance-wise, it doesn't make any sense to do. Which is why I don't do it. Who do these Garu belong to? They're just wandering through. That's pretty unusual. 
So if you want to play that way and steal stuff, uh, you're welcome to, but I won't. Because if you have knowledge of the game and you know where to go and you know what to steal, um, you go from zero to hero in a blink of an eye, which is very boring for entertainment. And honestly, very boring for gameplay. It's like, you know, playing SimCities and typing uh, Rosebud a thousand times or a million times. It's like, cool, you won. Congratulations. You've also ruined the game for yourself. Big old golf clap. Applause for you. That would be my two cents on that. Yeah, I could I could attack the Garu that we're wandering through. I think I still worry that they were attached to some sort of caravan or a larger group that would cause me trouble, which is why I didn't really touch them. Because if you piss off, you know, you don't want to piss off too many at once because uh, that is a very, very fatal mistake to make. As Garu, in a large horde, are not forgiving. And they're not very tasty either. They're good pack animals, but in this series we're not using any pack animals ever. Oh, King's being chased by uh, dust bandits. Which sucks. They really cut him up. Uh, I'm going to have L's go back on passive. And everybody but L's and Kang... Come help out with this fight. Yeah, okay, there we go. Kang is having problems going to the base. I'm not worried about him getting... I mean, he might get knocked out, but no one's going to die from a dust bandit. But he's just ridiculously over-encumbered. Stop hitting him! He's just delivering steel. God, what a jerk. And our, uh... Metal plates box overflowed, which is going to be really handy when it comes time to uh, making armor. So, the more the merrier. I don't really have any interest in a speedrun. Kenshi is a... Uh, whoa! Jesus. Low Earth Orbit, here we come. Kenshi is a, a, a game that I revere for its potential storytelling. Speedrun is any percent. Uh, using all exploits and whatnot would just be very boring to me, and I'll never do that. It's, it's just too boring. Too procedural. It ruins a game that shouldn't be ruined. <laughs> IMO. Alright, let's uh, pick up Kang. I didn't allow him to defend himself, which is my fault, not his. Stick him in the bed. And we're going to start healing up uh, Els, I don't believe, got hurt. So, as Els finishes tr his training, I'm going to get everyone, um, everyone patched up and ready to go on a bit of an adventure. Even my swordsmith got banged up. Oh, am I? I'm not out of meds. What are you doing? Oh, we did patch them up. Okay, cool. There's still some that are uh, a little wounded, but nothing too bad. Dust Banish is leveling up the flying scale? Yeah, apparently. Once Rackfin's uh, healed up, oh, goat herders, or maybe just a pack of goat, I will uh, go loot whatever Dust Bandits are still lying around. More beds obviously would be helpful. One bed for everybody would be ideal, but don't have the fabric for that. So we're up to the 17, and I'm just going to have him keep going until everybody's healed up. And I'm, I'll am i just be combat avoidant until we're ready to go. I'm not sure what McNower and Oren are doing, but uh, you guys can leave. And these dust bandits seem to be dying, not wounded, so I'll be able to loot them whenever I get around to it. Trapper Keeper, have you made any other blades? You have. At least one more. They can hand out. Alright, Rockfin's healed up enough for my tastes. I'm going to have him drop off his med supplies 
maximizing his backpack. And let's make a little bit more scratch selling the Dust Bandit stuff. We are really making bank on Dust Bandit gear. Whoever's making these um, heart protectors, uh, our economy is intertwined with your heart protectors. Which is a funny way of thinking about it. A uh, hydrate. Cheers. Toolman Mike. There are three different levels of chests to train up on. I only have access to two of them. The last one is uh, unlocked with ancient science. So I won't have access to that before I set out. And that, I believe, brings you up to 30? And that's true of most things. Um, as you progress up the science tree, uh, you require more and more... Um, a higher level of, like, a tech bench to be able to access it. I'll actually switch my turban out now, finally. Probably a lot of people are wondering when I would do that, and the answer is now. Uh, what is going on over here? More hunger bandits. At this point, the hunger bandits, there's not enough money in it for me to bother. Oh, you meant, yes, it's a thing? Yeah, so it is a thing. Yep. Alright, Fang, you're healed up enough. Poetic, you're healed up enough. Trapper Keeper, you're definitely healed up enough. Ruka. Sharp Point. Ooh, Chemo's getting very hungry and fully. And those are the last ones that need it. So as soon as those three are healed up, plus Kang, uh, we will head out to go for the danger science. I don't recall seeing the dust boss in any of the bosses, the bodies that I've looted here. Sometimes the, uh, or generally speaking, the dust boss has slightly higher quality gear than the rest of them. Lost Drifter, thanks for making it to a stream. And welcome. We are just about ready to go on an adventure. That's what we're getting ready for. Check the other gate fight. The other gate fight was Starving Bandits. They weren't dust. They weren't the dusters. It's possible that he made it out, or... That he wasn't part of this group, or that I haven't spotted him. Oh man, that bone dog is just chewing you up, dude. Yeah, none of these seem to be the uh, bosses. Hey, free loot is free loot, right? I'm not that worried. The The quality difference is pennies. Or cats. Just a few cats. I was just hoping to grab his helmet and use it as my own. But if I can't spot him, I don't really care. We'll be making our own armor in uh, pretty pretty soon, I'd, I'd like to think. So, if we're about to start making our own armor. Looting the almost completely garbage quality armor off of these dust bandits is uh, is not worth that much to me. So I have a few more bolts for headshot to use, and I have about 5k to spend. These guys are getting in a fight again, so I'm actually going to turn everybody's jobs off, and send everybody up here so that nobody gets in a fight heading into uh, yet another fight. I'll keep Fang, and Trapper Keeper, and Elves doing their thing, but everybody else is going to stop. Uh, Rockfin here, let's have you go to the rebel base and top up your food. Just make sure that no one... Okay, yeah, this is a hungry bandit, so I don't really care. 
You can overrun my base. It doesn't matter to me. Unfortunately, I think I stopped the cactus harvest in the middle of a harvest, but whatever. Uh, I'm eager to leave. So we'll be doing that in just a second here. Which mods do I think are essential? Um, I don't think any are essential. I think it's totally up to you. So you can mimic the mods that I have, and I have very, very, very few. Most of the mods that I have installed don't do very much. Like, Silent Corpse Flies just makes the corpse flies silent. Um, so it's really up to your personal preferences. I would say maybe a UI mod would be nice. And then maybe a map mod would be nice, but then short of the UI mobs and map mods, uh, the rest are really up to you and your own personal preferences. And I don't, I don't want to assume your preferences. Some people like super modded runs, some people don't. But uh, none are, no, no mods are necessary, and you can definitely play Kenshi for the first time ever with zero mods. That's totally doable, totally fine. So we're about to head on the adventure that I've been promising. I know it's been a little while, but uh, we just had to get the required skill for it. And trust me, you're going to see why I need that skill uh, as soon as we set out. All right. Rockfin's backpack has a little bit of food for the road. And I'm going to want to actually fork this over to Kang. No, I'll keep it. I'll have Kang carry the, uh, the the camping stuff. So Kang, you will carry these sleeping bags. And then Rockvin, you'll carry the splint and the repair kits. And then let's trade the bolts. I don't have a bolt bag, which would be good for, for a headshot to have at some point. And let's take a look at everybody's health. King's a little hurt, but uh, he you'll be fine. I'm just making sure that nobody is like almost losing a limb or anything like that. No, everybody's fine. Trapper Keeper, what blades have you made for us? You have three katanas. So everybody's jobs are now off. Um, and Sharp Point, you are going to trade... I think the easiest way to do this is Trapper Keeper just drop two of those katanas for others to use. Sharp point, you take one and put your old weapon in a box. And Turda, you take the other old weapon in a box. And now we are all set to go. There is no food left in the mining barrel, I already checked. Okay, so she's slightly encumbered, but she's still faster. Uh, the slowest would be Jackabot, so let's all follow Jackabot. And Jackabot, you are going to take us uh, south. So let me update the current goal. Well, actually, the current goal is really the same. I've just been prepping this whole time. Just took me a good hour to do it, to get the, uh, the lockpick skill. So L's here. Is our one and only lockpick in the group of a lockpicking skill of 17. Let's hope he's up to the task. Because if he falls flat on his face, uh, there's not much I can do about it. Oh, adventures. <laughs> yes. Oh, here we go with the dunes. Rip eardrums. I might reach out to that mod maker and just say additional adjustments may be needed.
Now, one of the advantages of Rockfin's missing arm is uh, toughness XP. So if you take a look at his uh, toughness, he has a racial bonus, right? And then on top of that, because he has a crippled arm, he'll level up his toughness even more quickly, uh, which is really cool. Right, so there's obviously Duff Dust Bandit Camp back that way. And we are headed to a, a ruin cluster that most new people go to get some of their first books because it's sort of the easiest and safest to go to. What's the best type of armor early game? Uh, the armor that you can afford that doesn't slow you down. Uh, whatever you can afford that doesn't slow you down. So I can talk a little bit about armor and coverage. So if you take a look at like a heart protector. it's Heart protectors are crap, by the way. Coverage is 50%. So there's a 50-50 chance that when you get hit wearing a heart protector... The heart protector will actually do anything for you. And then, uh, it, this is kind of hard to show without a higher quality armor. Um, but then it has cut resistance and blunt, res blunt resistance, which resists either cutting or blunt weapons. So, what you're going to want for an ideal armor is armor that has 100% coverage or close to it. Uh, so, like, these pants here have 90% coverage. They cover 90% of your legs... Which means 9 out of every 10 uh, attacks to the legs, your armor will cover. So 1 out of every 10 attacks, it might not. Um, so generally for me, when I look at armor, I first go for things that cover 100%. Because if it doesn't cover 100%, there's a chance that your armor doesn't factor into an attack. And if it's to your head or chest or something like that, it means you're dead. It means you've died. If it was a hard enough hit. So that's 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 really important. And then besides that, uh, then you're looking at stuff that has cut res uh, like high cut resistance, high blunt resistance, once you get 100% coverage. And the reason why I say also things that don't slow you down is really early game in Kenji, you're going to want to run away from most attacks because they're scary. So don't, uh, don't set yourself up with armor that is encumbering, that slows down your athletics. Because if you do that, you can't run from things, and you'll just end up dead. You'll end up better protected, but dead in the long run. So, that would be my advice. Is the armor that you can afford that has uh, good coverage and doesn't slow you down. So I don't believe that anybody is actually wearing anything that slows you down. So, so here's an example of pants with good coverage here. Samurai cloth pants. Now obviously, the cut resistance is pretty terrible, but same with the blunt resistance. But it does cover 100% of the legs and 50% of the stomach. And then this sleeveless lung coat covers 100% of the stomach and 60% of the legs. So they overlap one another uh, for two layers of coverage. So that's another way to do it. Gandolfin, thank you for the follow. The best armor is high melee defense? Yes, that's probably true. Or dodge, actually. Both. High melee defense and dodge are going to be a little bit more efficient for you than armor. It's best to not get hit. But if you're going to have to get hit, you're going to want to wear something. Alright, so here we are in the swamp. Gotta keep our heads on a swivel. Because, uh, you know, this is blood spider territory and blood spiders. So blood spiders would be one of the types of enemies that could one-shot you, hypothetically. If uh, you didn't have head coverage and they hit you in the head real hard and it wasn't mitigated and they got lucky with a hard hit, uh, they could rip your head off in one, one strike. Especially if you have a, a weak head. Like if you were a hiving hiver drone. Shek have tough heads. They have a head health of 125, which is a lot less likely to be one-tapped by a strong attack. 
Shek have some of the tougher bodies. Shek and skeletons have tough bodies, whereas humans have average and hivers have low. You know, except for hivering soldiers. But hiver, hiver soldiers have a different issue, which is they have really, really, really tough heads, but they can't wear helmets. So they can still die to, like, harpoon attacks to the head that just absolutely devastate because there's no uh, there's no armor resistance for a hiver's head unless you use mods. So on these planes here, we should be a little bit further away from the um, the blood spiders. A little bit less likely to get interacted with them. I'm going to have uh, Kang just carry his backpack like this, so it's not encumbering combat-wise. And uh, we'll see if Rockvin can do the same. Back into the swamp, my friends. Rain's armor has a martial artist bonus. Yeah, but I'm not going to strip her for it. And actually, uh, giving armor that has bonuses hurts leveling like if you had a um if you hypothetically had armor that gave 100 to martial arts you would never level because the way your skill levels up is calculated based upon um the sum of your armor so if you really want to level up martial arts you're actually better off mid game like when you're trying to grind it out why can i not unpause wow are we really loading the zone that long um, mid-game when you have, like, let's say you have 40 martial arts, uh, one of the metas to be able to level up martial arts is to actually purposely wear gear that ruins your martial arts skill, so it's easier for you to level it up. And I might need to do a quick save and load here, because we are not moving. And these are skeletons. Which is a weird name for a species that don't have robot, uh, don't have bones. The old Kenshi when in doubt reload. Destroyer Roy says my two martial artists are in full plate samurai just for that reason. Yes, it is easier to level up uh, wearing gear that hurts your skill than gear that helps it. So if I actually wanted help poetic, I would be giving him armor that hurts his martial arts skills so that he could level a little bit faster. Are there any downsides to being a skeleton? Um, I don't know. There's not rentable beds, many rentable beds for you to heal at, I guess, would be the downside. There's not a lot of downsides. The, the species in Kenshi aren't supposed to necessarily be balanced. The downside, I guess, is that uh, the Holy Nation will absolutely ruin your day if you get anywhere close to them. Maybe. Mark and Tannering, thanks for the resubs, by the way. So here we are traveling into the grid. I have to be careful about where I'm going because the grid is not exactly the most safe place as it can sometimes harbor beak thing nests. And if it does, I'm going to have to be very cautious, as we're not going to be able to take a, a whole nest of beak things by ourselves. But uh, it might have engineering books and ancient research and other uh, nice rare finds for us to, to grab. So that's the hope. So here is the workshop complex that is not actually really a point of interest. That's not where we're heading to on the map. Where we're headed to on the map doesn't actually show up on the map. You just sort of have to know it's there, uh, which is a bit of a spoiler for those that uh, have never been here before. It also looks like uh, Jackabot is now faster than Headshot. So I'm going to go to Squad, put Headshot at the back, and we will follow Headshot now. Jackabot is now outpacing her. If the opportunity arises, I will not be grabbing B-Thing's eggs. No. I, I, 
Not unless I wipe out the nest myself. Spoils about a refine, theft is not. I'm not stealing eggs to make money. Unless we do the damage to the big things ourselves. As far as I can tell, there haven't been nests in here, so that's good. I'd rather not have nests. And here is a workshop. Full of... Uh, wonderful, wonderful loot, hypothetically. So, Els needs to get off his butt, sober up, and get lockpicking. So here, in this ancient complex, you have uh, lost technology. Now, some of these devices are just... Some of them are like general storage boxes, right? Just, they have random storage, and you're not going to find anything nice in the things that are unlocked. Not usually. Some of these are workbenches, so this is like an electrical workbench, which turns copper into electrical components. But some of them, like this, is a metal chest. The lowest possible chance that you have to lockpick is 5%. If you don't have the skill to lockpick something at 5%, you can't even bother. So as you can see here, these boxes are a maximum difficulty for elves, but one of the advantages of a maximum difficulty box is that... Um, it will level up his skill the most. The harder the harder the lock is, uh, the more XP you get for trying to unlock it. So right now what I'm doing with Al's here is running around trying to find easier to pick boxes like this one and getting them under the uh, out of the way so that I could do the harder ones uh, afterwards. And just looting everything that I possibly can. So here are tools and here's the damaged book which is useless now. It literally says that. I've never really found anything in the benches, so there are benches like this research bench, for instance, which we could use or loot or whatever, but I've never really found anything in there. It's really just all in the boxes. So, steel and hinges, and then we'll try this one. And the more you fail, the better it is. So there's another way to do this, which is to have someone like um, Els, if he ever lost his arms, to give him robotic arms to make his lockpicking skills terrible. And then it would help him to fail more often and level them up even more. So there's a lot of like min-maxing of skills that you can do uh, if you if you so choose. And I'm just being completionist here, going through each and every... And, and there's a lot of nested boxes, so you have to know to look for them. So like here's crossbow parts worth 400, uh, sort of nested in between, which would be very easy for a new player to not notice. But I believe that all that is left now are these two difficult-to-pick boxes. Uh, this one and... This one. And 6% and 6% because I've leveled up. I'm now level 19. So I'm actually sort of hoping that I fail a whole lot. Uh, to maximize the amount of experience that I get here. Because if I get lucky uh, immediately, I don't grind as much skill. And the higher this goes, the better it is for me in the long run. Because having a really capable lock pick that can pick anything that gets in my way um, is a really great skill to have. And as you can see, his skill is flying as he fails. 21. And, and just to prove my point of why I had to train him, if I check anyone else, I'm not skilled enough to do that. I'm not skilled enough to do that, right? No one else has the skills. In fact, I can tell everybody to try to pick this lock. And not a single one moves, because no one besides L's knows how to. Which means that at this point, I can safely go over to the spreadsheet here, go over to L's, and say lock picking is one of his skills now. And the hope is that in these hard to pick chests, uh, we have books that we're looking for. Wow, he has been failing a lot, which is boring for you, but very good skill for him. You would have thought that at 8% chance per now, by now, he would have hit this. He just wants to unlock the ancient technology of distilling, I suppose. Okay, okay. So, at this point, I have a lot of skill. I've gone up to level 24. Um, Els, you don't need to demonstrate... XP grind anymore. You you could you could pop this baby open. You have almost a 10% chance per try. <laughs> Els is like, no, 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 no. Fumble fingers. That's who I am. And 
it's a horse chopper. Of course it is. So if we look over to the roster here, uh, Saber is going to Fully. Fully, you get the Saber. That's uh, not what I was hoping for, uh, but that's okay. We'll try the other one. And there's another complex or two here as well, so this isn't our only chance. We have other chances. So so if you take a look at the difference of these sabers, uh, well, they're not even the same type. One's a ring saber, one's a horse chopper, uh, but they're pretty similar. And one does 0.81 cutting, and the other does 0.69, and this is a cat one quality. So this is actually roughly the quality that we could make ourselves. Now it is ma manufactured by the Cat and Scrap Masters, which add extra blunt damage to their weapons. Um, so if we made our own, it would be slightly weaker and have less blunt. But uh, yeah, that's basically the TLDR of the battle, the, the ancient loot here. Oh man, we're really, really going for the XP here, aren't we, Els? Do I need to sweeten the pot? Hey, Els, if if you pick this lock... There, okay, I didn't even have to do it. I was about to... Uh, that's what I'm talking about. No ancient books, which is unfortunate, but we have a flesh cleaver, a hacker class weapon, four engineering research, three high-level skeleton repair kits in a CPU unit, which is worth a whole lot, a generator core, which is weighs a whole lot, and then robotic components, which are worth a whole lot. This is um, a bit of a jack jackpot. Uh, so I am going to need to loot it carefully and distribute the weight of it well. Uh, this generator core, I don't even know if anyone can carry it without becoming immediately encumbered, to be honest. Uh, we'll see about that. Where'd the generator core go? Oh, I didn't even pick it up. Alright, so the generator core isn't worth a whole lot, but it's very, very, very heavy, which is good for, like, ex uh, weight training. And... Does anyone in the chat here that owns anyone that doesn't have a weapon specialty want to uh, specialize in hackers? Because I do, in fact, have a hacker here, which uh, might interest someone. I'll leave it there for now. So, unfortunately, this, uh, this nice arm... Um, doesn't really help me out because, uh, I'm missing a left arm, not a right arm, and they're not interchangeable. So if we go to limbs here, as you can see, left is what got, you know, ripped off of my man. And let's go ahead and switch the repair kits that, uh, he carries on him. I'll carry all three, in fact. And, uh... I don't know, I'll have Auron start on hackers for now. Cause she she has a bit of hacker skill to start. But I think she's stuck. Oh god, look at Kimo. Kimo, I don't know how you got there, but I hope you can keep moving. Auron's legit stuck. Let me fix this. Yoink. Plop. So the the people that started off with some hacker skills are the the ones that were unique and not unique named. And I'm actually just going to leave the horse chopper here. I don't even need it. Uh, it's not worth that much. So that was our first uh, ancient complex thingamabobber. I do believe that uh, Headshot is still the slowest person in the group. And we are going to continue searching this complex. I'm not going to bother trading it in. It's really not worth anything. That horse chopper was particularly low quality. And I believe, if memory serves, there's... So there's a fake complex or one that doesn't have anything in it, which is this one. And then, uh, I believe there's one other complex in this, um, in the grid. There's either two or there's three, and I always forget. Oh, Els needs to ditch... Wait, though. No. Uh, so let's trade with Case. Okay. So now Els is no longer encumbered. He started falling behind. 
Watch out for beat things. Oh, I know. Guess you weren't here when I said that there can be nests in here. But I am aware. I always have a hard time finding the other ones because they're actually not located on the map. So you kind of have to uh, poke around the map for them. And I know the camera work is a little weird. Yeah, you can look straight at them. Is this the one I hit? No, this isn't the one I hit. Okay, this is a new one. So there's potential for more loot here. What about Ruka? Is that big weapon a hacker? No, that big weapon's heavy. So if you take a look, uh, heavy weapons 22, because planks are heavy class. So the, the classes of weapons are katanas, sabers, hackers, blunt, uh, heavy, and polearm. Shek very, very, very rarely start with, um, with polearm. Like, Shek just aren't polearm users, not normally. Not to say that if you have a character in the series you can't wield a polearm, you're welcome to. You can you can tell me whatever you want, other than crossbows, because we have a law against that. Hey! There's a science book! That's awesome! Just not even in a locked box. I didn't even need a lock picker for that one. So this is a 6% metal chest. So, what's interesting about this metal chest... I wouldn't have been able to pick this metal chest if I came here first. If Els hadn't ground out skill from the other complex, uh, this chest would be below a 5% pick, which would not have allowed me to pick it. So, I didn't intend for this order of, you know, the order that I hit these facilities to be to my benefit, but it's case in point of, it's really, really, really important that you focus almost all of your picking skill on one or two individuals so that you can't get locked out of things. Now, if I couldn't get into it, the, I could use tools to open it up, but um, strength uh, strength is not a, a not really a viable way to do it. I believe it can destroy things that are inside. What oh, hexa? Reno Bino, thanks for all the gifted subs. And this is a really easy chest to pop open, so we'll do this like second try, third try, and another book. Sweet. So two books, four engineering research so far is the hall. I'm going to do a very, very quick prediction. Will I get three more ancient books? At least three more. Yes or no. We have a, a few of these locked boxes yet to open, so I'm going to pick them, and I'm not going to look at what's inside anything anymore uh, until the prediction's done. So let's start picking these open. So I have two books. I'm wondering if I can get at least five total as a yield from this here. Can I work in these workstations? Uh, hypothetically, you could, but they're unpowered, so you'd need to build some sort of power source for them. Um, and taking a look at that. Uh, I can't even prospect right now. Uh, there is no wind here, so it would have to be... Uh, it would have to be biofuel. Because... Well, I mean, you could use a small wind generator, but it's going to suck. So, essentially, no. I mean, hypothetically, yes, you could do it, but the logistics of trying to do it are uh, very challenging. Wow, he is not opening this up very efficiently. I was going to have him pick all of it and then open it up as like a uh, as an unboxing reveal. Oh, there we go. A fat thief with thick fingers. You know, I feel personally attacked. Mods, can you, uh... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, cheers. Oh, there he goes. So he's opened all of them. You have only about 10 seconds left on this prediction, and then I'll pop them open. Alright, there we are. 
Oh, here's one more. And engineering research. We also have a Ninja Blade MK1 Mark 1, which means, uh, Fang, you're going to get that. And a bunch of other stuff that I currently even don't even have weight for. So let's find someone. Here, Fang, we'll have you come on up. Go get your Mark 1 Katana. Schwang. And we'll leave the other one on you so it looks like you're dual wielding. Uh, hoping that you use the better one in combat. I... Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm not going to chance it. I will let you look like you have dual wield once I have... Um, uh, once once you have two weapons of the same quality, so you're not using the crummier one on accident. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty sharp blade. It's .92. It's one of the sharpest blades we have now. So, and we have a blunt weapon. So if anyone wants... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to let anyone train blunt just yet because that's really terrible for training progress. But uh, yeah, so we're up to three books. Uh, I need two more books for the prediction to come true. I do need to spread the weight of this loot around. So let's... Els, you trade some of this to Kimo. Thank you for watching Shex Conquest, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 29th. If you have any feedback for me or questions of any type, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and count on timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much to my Twitch subscribers and Patreon patrons for supporting the channel. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and catch the next one or an upcoming stream. Farewell, everybody.